Hey everyone, this is Nick Dearbertis teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be doing an introduction to cost of equity estimation. This is part of our lecture segment on the DCF model, focusing on the cost of capital side of the model. So we already gave a quick introduction to the DCF model and its various parts. And then we talked through enterprise and equity value. Now we're getting to the cost of equity estimation. So we're going to focus here on using the capital asset pricing model or CAPM as our model for estimating the cost of equity. Now it's definitely not the only model we could have used. Uh, it does tend to be the most basic model uh, that can be applied. And we're just focusing on the basic approach here because once we learn the general way that we can go about this, then it is not too difficult to expand into using more complex models. So the CAPM was kind of the dominant asset uh, stock pricing model um, from the 60s uh, and going into the 70s. And then in 1976, uh, we had the arbitrage pricing theory come along and that really spawned a whole new era of models being used to look at the returns in stocks. Um, so that's where you'll have models like the Fama French factor models and many, many other factor based models are coming out of this arbitrage pricing theory. Um, and so you can definitely expand into using those other models like Fama French three, five factor or whatever other factor models. Uh, you would just need to have data on those factors. And otherwise you would be following a similar approach to what we're going to do here with the cap app. But with the cap app, the general idea is, uh, that here we have an equation where the return on the stock is being explained by the risk-free rate plus a beta coefficient, which represents the covariance of stock, this stock's returns with the market risk premium. We multiply that beta by the mar market risk premium, which is the average return on the market minus the risk-free rate and then we also have an error component in here in the model representing that this is not going to be exact. We're never uh, going to be able to predict stock returns exactly. Uh, if I could do that, then I would be very rich. Uh, but no one can predict stock returns. There's always randomness involved in them. Uh, and that is picked up by this last term here. Um, and because it's random, sometimes it'll be positive, sometimes it'll be negative. And so we just assume that on average, this term is actually zero. So the approach we're going to use here is to estimate the model on historical data and then uh, assume that, that the, the parameters we fit from the model are going to apply in the future as well. And ultimately, uh, this RI, after we use our, our parameter we estimated from historical, and now we're calculating the future, the RI is going to be the return on the stock or the cost of equity for the company. Um, those two are actually one and the same. The return on the stock and the cost of equity for the company. Uh, you can think of them as just being on opposite sides, but they're the same thing. Um, every uh, bit of money that uh, the investor earns is a cost for the company. And so those rates are gonna be the same. So um, getting more specifically into the estimation of this. Um, so, Looking at historical data, we're going to have historical stock prices, and from those, we'll calculate historical returns. And we'll have that for our stock, 
as well as for some uh, security, which represents the market. Typically, the S&P 500 is a common security that people use for that. So we have historical prices on each of those. Then we get historical returns on each of those. And so uh, we're going to have the historical stock returns coming over here uh, on the left. And then uh, we'll have to use an estimate of the risk-free rate. That can either be uh, using the historical risk-free rate, um, getting data on treasuries in order to estimate that, or you can just put a static uh, single risk-free rate in there that you think is representative of the time period. And then the historical market returns, uh, the S&P 500 or whatever security you're using are gonna come in as this RM. So then the things that we don't know are this beta and this epsilon. The epsilon, we said, Sometimes it's it's going to be positive. Sometimes it's going to be negative. On average, it should be zero. And so we're just going to ignore this uh, and just deal with this part of the model. So then we have just one parameter here that we're going to estimate. And that's our goal of fitting this model on historical data is then to estimate this beta. Um, so we estimate that beta based off the historical data. And then in order to predict the cost of capital going forward, we have to make an assumption. And that's that the beta that was there in the historical data is going to be the beta going forward. Um, so if you have very strong opinions about this, you could adjust the beta in your model if you think that the future is going to be substantially different than the past. Beta is... Uh, typically thought of as a measure of systematic risk uh, because it's measuring how much this company moves with the overall market. So, uh, you know, a beta of two basically means that if the market's going up 1%, then the stock is going up 2%. And if the market goes down 1%, then the stock is going down 2%. Um, and so it's kind of a multiplier on the market's returns making it into a piece of our overall stock's return. Now, when the market goes up 1%, this stock's return, even if it has a beta 2, is not necessarily going to be 2%, and that's because of this epsilon term. It could be higher or lower than that in any given time period, but on average, basically, uh, it's governed by the beta that it should be moving around a multiple of the market's returns. Um, so if you think that uh, the company has just taken on new operate, they just started a new business line, which is going to be substantially more risky than their existing business, you might estimate a historical beta of one, but you might adjust it upwards to 1.1 or 1.2 or, or something like that in order to reflect that, well, there's going to be additional risk in the company going forward compared to before. Um, and so you don't just have to take the historical one and use it directly. But that's that's the most common is that you don't have any new information on whether the risk is going to be higher or lower. And so you just use the historical beta. Um, and the way that we're going to estimate that beta is through a regression approach. Um, so, you know, the regression is a uh, classic y equals mx plus b. Um, and so uh, the risk-free here is the b, the intercept. Um, and the uh, b here is the m and the mx, and the market risk premium is the x. So this is the exact format of a regression equation. And so we can fit a regression on these data in order to determine the beta. So that's uh, what we're going to look at in the next two videos, accomplishing that in both Python and Excel. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.